Welcome back to another episode of Masters of the Air, Episode 7. Recap and Ending Explained The prisoners of Stalag Luft Roman III attempt to connect with the outside world. Berlin becomes the 100 primary target. Rosie makes a crucial decision. Warning, there are huge spoilers ahead, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. In the sixth episode of Masters of the Air, Bucky was taken prisoner by the Nazis and had to march through a German town that the British had destroyed. He was going to be buried in the wilderness, and he was almost dead. You can wait here, doing nothing. But he took it as a sign and ran for it. Unfortunately, he was too tired and confused to survive very long, and the Nazis managed to recapture him. They then brought him to Frankfurt, where Ulrich Haussmann would question him. When that failed, he was sent to Stalag Luft Roman III, which was under the authority of the Luftwaffe, where he saw Buck again. Crosby lived for a while at Oxford, where he got along well with Westgate, his flatmate. In order to re-enter the cockpit with fresh vitality and confidence, Rosie Rosenthal traveled to the Coombe House for a prolonged treatment session with Dr. Huston. In this episode, let's see how their tales develop. Two Bucks create a radio. Masters of the Air's seventh episode opens with Buck, Bucky, and the other POWs going about their daily lives in Stalag Luft Roman III. I mean, we can wait here. Doing nothing. Although it's not made particularly clear, they consume cats to get their daily protein fix. They can determine if the Nazis are as strong as they seem by using their homemade radio to hear the status of the conflict. An examination breaks that, and the radio is taken away. Rosie Rosenthal returns to Thorpe Abbott's and takes on the role of training the new hires. Conveniently, Quinn and Bailey triumphantly return and are dismissed. That's because they have too much knowledge about the French and Belgian resistance. In the event that the Nazis catch them once again on the battlefield, they will most likely be interrogated until they divulge important information about what is going on right in front of their eyes. What on earth happened in France? How on earth could the anxious Quinn navigate Nazi-occupied areas without experiencing another meltdown? How did the females fare? Not sure. This is not addressed in any way in the episode. It seems likely that it was left on the editing room floor since these two supporting characters had enough time on screen in the earlier episodes to warrant a meaningful comeback, but I'll be giving the authors a pass if I do that. Thus, I will state that it is very plausible that poor writing was used in this instance. Crosby and Rosie talk about how pilots and their crews have a certain number of flights to complete before they are permitted to return home. Rosie gets ready to launch a bombing run on Berlin, which has reportedly previously been attacked many times, but has been told to stop. Even if they strike their objectives, the operation is only partly successful since they incur severe casualties and enormous losses. In spite of this, the Americans still continue to deploy more young soldiers to Berlin. In the middle of all of this, by the way, Crosby cheats on Westgate. How did they go from being close friends to having sex together? I'm clueless. Is he written this way, or is this arc still on the editing room floor? In any case, this is a poor narrative, I'm not sure. As Buck and Bucky are discussing how to get raw materials to create another radio, the bombing in Berlin cuts them off. The joy is short-lived, however, as a vicious dog mauls one prisoner and the Nazi guards shoot another. This gives Bucky a feeling of urgency, and he begins to gather the pieces he needs for his radio. Buck discloses that he has proposed to Marge while they are waiting and getting ready for their next move, which serves as his inspiration to escape the hellhole unscathed. What do you think the odds are now? Of us making it home alive? Long. Major Jack Kidd is not happy about the plan change. As Crosby is composing letters of sympathy for the departed, Kidd tells them he has to plan a course for another bombing flight over Berlin. After learning of this from LT, call. Bennett, the airmen express their disapproval of these missions in a loud manner. Bennett gives them his word that he will be in the air with them. The arrival of the P-51 Mustangs, which are just as quick and deadly as the Nazi fighter aircraft, undoubtedly makes a difference, but it's unclear whether it would allay the airmen's fears. When the B-17s drop their bombs on Berlin, the Mustangs are able to repel the Nazis. The crew of Rosie triumphantly returns. Kidd tells him that because he completed 25 missions, he may return home. However, there is now a 30-mission quota. 
Therefore, it is mandatory for the new recruits and those who haven't completed 25 missions to remain and complete 30 bombing runs. Shuns becomes enraged by this and gives Kid a hard time about how they are being sent to die thoughtlessly. In Masters of the Air, there is an unbalanced juxtaposition between the critique and celebration of war. Moments such as the one in which Shuns chastises Kid don't get the same amount of screen time as moments that are more action-packed and seem more motivating. I know this is propaganda, but it's absurd that people are acting like this is a high-profile program that's attempting to win an Emmy or something. Following all of this, Crosby and Westgate have yet another romantic session. Given that Crosby is meant to serve as the viewer's proxy, this whole journey is really strange and uncomfortable. And without warning, it comes out that he is infidelity he is married, incidentally. So how am I meant to interact with him? I doubt that all of this was done by the Harry Herbert Crosby of real life. If so, maybe he wasn't the best choice to serve as the show's narrator and audience stand in. I wonder why this is even a story element if he didn't. Episode 7 of this program has shown more than any other that the writers and producers paid little attention to the writing or the storyline in favor of securing well-known performers and historical authenticity. Either way, Buck's radio is broken. Hence, Bucky advises that rather than waiting for assistance to arrive, they should devise a strategy to leave the area. Buck claims he wants to go back to Marge in one piece, therefore he doesn't want to take a chance. So he gives it another go and manages to get his radio operating again. Later, during a late night check, Buck, Bucky, and the other captives find out that the British detainees seem to have attempted to get out by excavating a tunnel for more than a year. Now that this has been uncovered, it is certain that the number of inspections will only rise, which will reduce Buck's opportunities to do anything significant with that homemade radio or to wait for assistance to come. Did Rosie sign up for additional missions? A call to meet Similit interrupts Buck and Bucky's discussion about leaving the Stalag Luft Roman III at the conclusion of Masters of the Air Episode 7. The Americans are told by the Nazi jailer that 50 of the British escapees were apprehended again and put to death. He says this in an effort to demoralize the Americans and prevent them from trying a similar jail escape. But that's not all. According to Similit, he wants to count every Jewish person in the American camp. To convey that they do not distinguish between different POWs, the American camp colonel claims that they are all Americans. Similit reiterates the Gestapo's and the SS's position on the killing of Jews, demonstrating that it is evident that he dislikes hearing no. At last, Buck understands that Bucky's intentions to attempt to flee are preferable to his own since the longer they wait, the worse the Nazis would treat them because the one thing they have mastered is inhumanity. Rosie Rosenthal, back at Thorpe Abbott's, can't stand to sit back and watch his fellow airmen die, so he asks Bennett to re-enlist him rather than send him home. There's a catch. Bennett is prepared to accept his proposition. The current tactic seems to be that the German planes need to be lured, even though the Mustangs are more than capable of defeating the Luftwaffe. The B-17 bombers will provide that bait. This implies that in order to allow the Americans time to fire back, the bombers must take off without a clear target so that they might be fired at by the Germans. It's a suicide mission, and Rosenthal accepts this tactic without hesitation. It seems like Rosenthal is prepared to give it his all. However, I'm not sure whether this is a consequence of his treatment sessions. He wants to spend the next five flights with his fellow airmen. He is done lounging. Perhaps the outcome of Rosenthal's wager will become clear in the following two episodes. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching.